How are you and the new managing director processing this geopolitics, this international relations onslaught that we see? Look, I think today one has to be pleased that two of the major on, the, on two of the major uncertainties that we have, that the United States and China are saying they're making progress, and that in Europe there's a proposal on Brexit that's mm -hmm. to be considered. So that's good news. We'll see how each one of those plays out. But for us. The global economy is in a gradual, synchronized slowdown, and it's important that we act to do something about that. Uh, the risks have been trade tensions and the uncertainty that comes from that, Brexit, geopolitical risks. The fact that living in a world of uh, very low interest rates probably means that there'll be more risk-taking and possibly financial stability risks down the road. So there are plenty of reasons to be concerned, and our membership assembling here this week has plenty to talk about besides the, the Washington Nationals. But are you really hopeful about a U.S.-China trade deal that lasts? It's hard to know. Um, there's always hope. I think it's important that they uh, reach agreement on the, the key issues yeah. of where both sides make compromise. We need new trade practices enhanced and enforced so that both sides can feel comfortable that there are understandings about how trade and investment will proceed. We hope that that can be accomplished. What is the one thing that you worry about when you look at monetary policy? Is it now starting to do more harm than good because it creates asset bubbles and it doesn't actually help the economy so much? Well, I don't view it that way and I don't think one should. The, the monetary policy may have diminished effectiveness because once you've used up so much of the interest right. rate declines and you right. get into the low or the negative range, there's not so much punch. But if the economy's weak and if there, isn't, if there aren't other tools readily available, the monetary authorities have to do what they can. And I think they are doing what they can. Now, our advice is there should be we shouldn't overly rely on monetary policy and where there's fiscal space it should be used and that uh, private sector needs to be more dynamic so any right. structural reforms that you can to reinvigorate the private sector that makes sense but in the meanwhile central bankers have to do what they can now on your last point about financial stability risk i don't think you can just abandon the mandates of central banks because there are there is risk taking i think rather you need to explore whether there are other tools, what we call macro prudential tools, tools that can limit, limit leverage and risk taking and make right. the financial sector sufficiently safe.